in the morning, raise you in the evening, raise you when I'm young and when I'm old. Praise you when I'm laughing, praise you when I'm leaving, praise you every season of the soul. If we could see how much your work, your power, your might, your endless love, and surely we would never cease to pray. Let everything that, everything that, everything. Everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, I think we got a little echo there. We can turn that down just a tiny bit. Welcome to Worship at Holy Trinity this afternoon. We have a special day today in worship. We have a baptism. Last week we had one just at the end of the service outside, but those gathered online will be able to see inside this time too for a baptism for a little Mr. Ethan in just a couple of minutes. So we welcome the family here today, and we are excited to welcome you as a precious child of God in this service of baptism today. Also... Um, our congregational meeting, the annual meeting, will be tomorrow at 12.30 p.m., following that late 11 o'clock service. So please be here to be part of that. We need a forum. We're looking at the annual budget again, um, voting in members for council to a very, very important annual meeting. So please do come back as you're able for that meeting at 12.30 p.m. tomorrow. Also, new member classes are tomorrow. If you are interested in the possibility of joining Holy Trinity, please come to that. It's at 9.45 a.m. in the upper room, which is in the other building, just a little bit across the way here literally upstairs so it is the upper room for that 945 new member class we mentioned our baptism also we're hoping to as cases keep coming down we're looking to start fellowship again probably in november uh, so for those who are involved in fellowship uh, you'll need to feel comfortable if you feel comfortable serving food yet or not but of course we are giving permission as COVID team and staff to be able to say uh, let's go ahead and start some fellowship together after worship to beginning in November, as long as, of course, the cases keep coming down. We'll say if it's different for any reason, but that's what we're planning now, and we really look forward to that in the near future. You probably already saw a little bit more of what we had with our capital campaign, too. Of course, we have all LED lights in the entire sanctuary and building now to help save energy, last longer as well. And you probably saw the uh, parking lot that's been um, striped. And, of course, it was uh, sealed before being striped, too. So when I was using the backup camera, the, the there were these two white lines that I hadn't been used to seeing. They were nice and bright to be able to pull in. It was great. So that's another visual reminder of the fruition of our pay it down, pay it back, pay it forward capital campaign and some of the fruits of that coming around. So we give thanks for that, too, today. So now let us continue with our baptism for... Our newest member of Christ, Mr. Ethan Tyler Smelski, and the family also would come as well. We'll gather around the font. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ, living with Christ and in communion of the saints. We grow in faith love and obedience to the will of God. So Aaron and Amanda, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Ethan Tyler Smelski baptized into Christ? If so, please say, we do. We do. 
as you bring him to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God in the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world that God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Ethan Tyler grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, please say we do. And our sponsors tonight, do you promise to help nurture Ethan Tyler in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion of the church? People of God, do you promise to support Ethan Tyler and pray for him in his new life in Christ? Let us stand together. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He was sent into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We would like to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life, to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Okay, you can hand over. Ethan Tyler Smelsky, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. You belong to Christ in whom you are now baptized. Alleluia. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Ethan Tyler with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the joy of your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Ethan Tyler Smelsky, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ 
forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And mom, if you want to come out with me too, and dad, if you want to come too, we're going to come around the congregation. I want to introduce to you the very newest member of the body of Christ and of Holy Trinity. This is Ethan Tyler Smelsky. And so I ask our congregation too, you can come on ahead down if you want, to help nurture him and raise him in the faith, to help teach him the creed, the Ten Commandments, all the things that we believe, to help him prepare himself for the table of the Lord and to be with us as member of the community of Christ. And let's go over here this way too, because we don't want to leave you guys out over here. I also want to introduce to you Ethan Tyler Smelsky, our newest member of the body of Christ, our newest baptized member. So I ask you too to be those co-sponsors with all of us to help raise him up in the faith and to let him know that he is a child of God. All right, let's have the formal welcome too. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let us warmly welcome our newly baptized. <laughs> all right, congratulations, family. You may be seated. Actually, you can go ahead and stay standing, and everybody else can stand up too, because we will continue then with our call to worship. Fellow members of the body of Christ, this is the day that the Lord has made. And so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in all and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. done for me.
continue now with our confession and forgiveness. God of mercy and love, forgive us for turning away from you, for putting other things first in our lives, for the things we've done and the things we've left undone, for not loving you with all our hearts or our neighbors as ourselves. Heal us, forgive us, and strengthen us to walk in the light of your love again. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light that no darkness can overcome. In his name, receive the good news that you and all who turn back to God are forgiven, blessed, and renewed to live and love again. Amen. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. my mother's womb you have chosen me love has called my name I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. child of God. The first reading is from Hebrew, chapter 5, 1 to 10. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And the one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. 
Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The gospel tonight is from Mark, 10th chapter, 30 to 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. With the baptism which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those who whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those they recognize as the rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But this is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be the first among you must be slave for all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. So, a Lutheran and a priest went into a bar and, whoops, got a bad start to that joke already. All right, we'll try again. So a Lutheran and a priest go into a bar and Lutheran says to the priest, you know, thank you so much for coming here with me. I wanted to have a place to get away from the church just to be able to talk to you. And the priest says, well, why are we coming to a bar? Both our congregations come here. <laughs> but... But the Lutheran said, well, I just didn't want to be around my pastor to ask. You know, I've, been, I've been struggling with something. I've been struggling with, with tithing. And I was just wondering if maybe you could talk to me as an outside source and, and give me some, some advice. Sure, my son, I'd, I'd be glad to give you advice, the priest said. What seems to be the trouble for you? And the Lutheran says, well, when I was growing up and I was a kid, I had this paper route that I just did part-time. And, and I'd make about $100 a month doing it. And, you know, I'd do a tithe from that. And the tithe was 10%. It was $10. And so... That was pretty easy. It was, it was not a problem, and it, it went pretty well. But now my new job is IT, and I'm making $10,000 a month. And if I tithe now with this new job, well, Father, that's going to be $1,000 a month, and that's a lot of money, and I'm, I'm really struggling with that. He said, can, can you help me with this struggle? And the priest said, yes, let, let's, I can help you with that. Let's, um, why don't we pray together for God to be with you in the midst of this? So, so the priest prays. Dear Lord, this child of God is having great difficulty with the, with the holy calling of, of tithing. Help him, Lord, by taking away this new job and bringing back his paper route so he'll have an easy time tithing again. <laughs> I love versions of that. It reminds me, too, that for us, too, in our stewardship, very often it's first world problems that keep us from being able to, to tithe or perhaps give more generously. And it does sometimes seem tougher when we have more resources. But the reality is that we're so, so blessed by God. Just one quick example, too, as we're talking about stewardship and we're entering into a stewardship season. And for us being holy stewards, which of course is the title for the message tonight. What does it mean to be a holy steward? I have one example from a, in our congregation, and that's Leslie Gilbert just recently. Uh, her mom told me this story, so, so mom, Laurie, told on, on Leslie. And so basically, uh, if you, anybody remember the homeless kit bags we were hearing about and some help put together? It was great we did. That's holy stewards right there. But Leslie had 
a couple extra ones, she didn't know how, that, that got just in her car. And she was just dropping her son off to um, preschool at, at a church. And she was there in a church parking lot, and she saw a woman at the edge of the parking lot who seemed like maybe she might have been homeless, potentially how she was dressed and her, her demeanor. Uh, and, and so Leslie decided to go up and just see, to try to be that holy steward in some way. And she rolled under the window. Wouldn't you know, this was the God moment for, for Leslie and all this. So this woman said, I'm, I'm looking for bags. Do you have any bags? And Leslie says, well, sure, I've got two right here. And she gets the homeless kit bags to her. And the woman opens up and says, oh, I can do so much with this. Thank you so much. And it was just the God moment that she happened to have those bags in her car to be able to give. And the, and the woman asked for bags at that time. There are so many ways that if we have open hearts, open minds, open hands, open arms, that we can be those holy stewards for God. And tonight it's not about just being stewards, it's about being holy stewards. And holy simply means that we acknowledge God as being part of that, that God is in the midst of that, that we are called by God. It's not just stewardship, but we're holy stewards. And I think the Hebrews text we just heard from Chuck helps out with that, about what it means to be a holy priest. That it's, it's someone who goes on behalf of the people and in relation to God, not just on their own. And even when there's a sacrifice for sins, it's not just for the sins of the people, but it's to be made for the sins of the priest too. For we high priests also have our human weaknesses as well. And it's not a calling just to be stepped into and done for status or for human gain, but it's something to do being called by God, we hear in verse 4. And then in verse 5, we hear about Jesus, this holy priest, who, who did not become this holy priest for glory, but because he was appointed by the one who said, you are my son. Even for Jesus, the son of God, it was the appointing from God the Father, that special, precious calling. Pastors have that sense of calling from God to be in congregations, other places of ministry. But we are all also a priesthood of all believers. And so that holy priesthood applies to us as well. All of us have been called to different gifts of ministry. So all of us have the opportunity to be holy stewards. So how can we be great holy stewards? James and John, they had their ideas in the gospel that we heard today. Lord, just, you know, what do we want? Give to us, please. And, and what is it they want from Jesus? Let one of us sit at your right hand and one at the left in your glory. They wanted to bask in the glory of Jesus. This is what we hear in the gospel of Mark. The gospel of Luke won't even mention James and John in this at all. In the gospel of Matthew, they blame James and John's mom. She's the one who asked it in, the, in that one. But here we have in what was probably written first, the shortest gospel, perhaps earliest written in the gospel of Mark, we hear it from the mouths of James and John, that this is what we want. And of course, Jesus, after some conversation back and forth, comes back to say that, you know, the Gentiles, their rulers lorded over them, but it's not to be so among you. For anyone who would be greatest, and in Greek that is megas, like mega, megaphone, megalodon, biggest possible shark, but who wants to be great, must be servant of all. Whoever wants to be first must be slave. And I love the word servant in this too. It's um, diakonos. It's the word in Greek that we get the word diaconal minister or deacon from. And of course, we have deacons now who are ministers of word and service in our ELCA as well. So diakonos means servant. Now that's a good one to have, but it's probably a little more uncomfortable to talk about slaves today. It's not a politically incorrect term to bring up you know, us to be like slaves. But you know, we're talking about Word of God here. That's what's in the Word of God. So let's go beyond any political correctness of the moment and look in the authenticity of the Scripture today. What is this word? Maybe it's just the same as servant, I wonder. So I looked it up. Nope, it's not diaconus mentioned the second time again. It is doulos. And doulos in the original Greek sometimes can mean servant, but even then it's usually servant-slave. Almost every time it's slave. 
So if you want an accurate translation, it truly is to be slave of all. And how is it then, if we look at this theologically, what's, what's the difference between a servant then and a slave? A servant may as well also be a very free person. They may have a vocation as a servant, a servant leader perhaps. We have many of them today. But they still perhaps will check in and check out, clock in and clock out, and they have their own other lives. A slave, their very whole life, existence, and being is as servant. And so it's interesting that right after this text, with doulos, with slave, we hear about Jesus next. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus didn't just clock in and clock out as a servant during daytime hours, but gave all of his very life and his very personhood for us as a humble servant. So maybe it makes sense to hear that doulos, that slave part, and we can think about that for us as being not just part of what we do, but being holy stewards as part of who we are, as our very identity, as our very life, something that we live and breathe in Christ Jesus, to be holy stewards, not just to do holy stewardship, but to be holy stewards. Now, if we think of the word stewards, steward is oikonomos, and oikonomos is not found in either of these two texts today. So you may think, well, I'm just kind of throwing this in for that, which I guess could be true, but, but the God moment for me in this is looking at that Greek term, which means steward, trustee, manager. It's sometimes referred to from free people, but in context of Scripture, it's almost always, or at least usually, involving either a slave or a freed slave. One who has been given this responsibility, this stewardship over this management of someone else's resources. And isn't that us, too? We are now freed slaves. We are no longer slaves to sin. We have been freed from that and then given all these resources as gifts and blessings to be then responsible managers and trustees and stewards over. So it makes sense that we are called holy stewards. Now I want to delve in a little bit more, something more blunt. Deal with an elephant in the room. We've got a couple elephants in the room this evening. This one, you don't usually hear me preach at all about money specifically, but we're going to go with money tonight in this stewardship season. And that this is money for our general offerings and our giving for the church. I mentioned probably a couple to three months back that we really could use some more offerings for our, for our general fund. Uh, we have a number of different specialized um, gifts that we give for our capital campaign, for our mortgage, for other things. But for the general giving, I mentioned that we really need some more gifts that way. We've had really up weeks and some not so high weeks, but the overall average has been coming down somewhat. So we literally, I hate saying this, but we literally don't have that much money in the bank right now as a congregation for the lights on, the salaries, and everything else that's going on for the church right here. Now, overall, giving in general has been strong, but for the general budget, not as much. And we're getting to a point now where we really do need to increase that giving. And so here's the thing with that, too. I have heard from some, both by phone and in person, Pastor Mark, we have no problem at all paying salaries. We have no problem keeping the lights on everything else. We love this church. We love giving to the ministry of it. We are just a little bit concerned about some of the things going on in the ELCA, and we don't really want to have the dollars go for that. I don't know how many people are thinking that way, but I know there's a number of people because a number of people have come to me. I, as pastor, don't actually fully resonate with every single thing that goes on in the ELCA, but there are a number of wonderful things that do. And when we give our offerings to the general offering here, yes, we do tithe also to the Synod and to our ELCA. So what happens to that money? I want to share with some just, so 90% is still here with this church and ministry we love, all the local things we do and the ways that we reach out to the world. Here are a few things that do happen that I can resonate with and I believe you really will too. Some of that money goes to plant brand new congregations. It is evangelism to starting those and supporting those. We have over 230 foreign missions in over 48 countries in the world. Some of your mission dollars go all across the planet to help spread the word of the gospel. 
We have youth and young adult leaders. We have over 80 in Global Mission who are young adult leaders that help support. It helps support all of our seminaries to help raise up new pastors and, yes, new deacons, as we heard about the word diaconus, for here, for our ELCA. It helps with stewardship, and some of those monies actually come back to the sentence and back to local congregations. Our stewardship program we're involved in right now, the Stewardship for All Seasons, is supported by our synod, and they highly subsidize it to make it very reasonable for congregations like us to be able to have good, healthy stewardship. So I don't know if you knew that, but some of the actual money that's given out actually does literally come back in. Some of the rest of it are for wonderful, great things. So I hope seeing now that it's not just 90%, but it's the high 90-something percentile that goes to wonderful things. Don't get caught up in the 0.1% or the 0.2% that may be something you disagree with. That's my plea. Because anything we give to, habitat, must, anything else, if you saw all the books, 100.0% of it, my guess is you'd find some little something, even in the best of ministries, that you would do a little bit differently. So if the vast majority of it goes to things that you know you love and support, I offer to give freely. And trust God. Trust God that your gift will go for God's kingdom and ministry. If you still are a little bit wondering about that, you can also give a check to Holy Trinity and write property in the bottom. We are looking at having a challenge gift too because we have some immediate things that have come up um, to be repaired, like an HVAC system to go out. Sometimes you have roof that leak, things like that. And so you can give that and 100% will go to property. We're even going to have a challenge gift coming up that between now and year end. But if you can, please give to that general budget. Now, before anybody happens to freak out, though, with all this, there is still really good news in all this. So I want to paint a big picture for you, too. But I want it to be blunt and honest and straightforward with where we are for our general budget and giving first. Okay, and that is all true. We are in a low place right now. If we kept going at this trajectory, we're not out of money yet. We still have money in the bank, but we would be going to that route. I've been here, I was called as pastor here just over four years ago. So we've been walking in ministry together for four years. Here's some of the blessings too, even just in terms of money that have happened. We have started this capital campaign, pay it back, pay it down, pay it forward. And you have given, we have given over half a million dollars to that. Four years ago, we started with over $560,000 in the mortgage. We only have a little over 270000 now. We've cut it literally in more than half. There have been so many good things that happen, and so the overall giving has been incredible. We just need the focus to funnel it more towards our general offerings, and then we're firing on all cylinders. And also, if you imagine, so even if just a small portion of the capital campaign had gone to our general fund, there's no problem right now. Even if a portion of the mortgage had gone to general fund, no problem right now. So we have those resources already among us. But I don't want to pick and choose that way with either or as well because we do know that there are a number of folks in the congregation that do not tithe. And even if we only had close to half of us tithing, close to half giving the first fruits of 10%, we would have the mortgage paid off in no time, capital campaign more than fully funded, more than enough buffer in, in, in the general fund, more than enough for any property things to come up that we want to also have for a buffer, and we would have money for ministry for kids and young adults to start young adult ministry here. We'd have money to have more going into must ministries, for more going into Habitat for Humanity, for more of our social ministries. We could do so many incredible, awesome things here. It can be great, and it already is great, but it could be that, that Greek, that megas, that great, right here and right now as holy stewards here at Holy Trinity. So that's what I want to, to inspire and invite you to, is to is to wonder, not in the way that James and John did, but in a Christ-like way to say, how, how can we be great as holy stewards? The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give His life a ransom for many. And that many is you and me, all of us. We have been showered with so many gifts. We are rich. We have all the riches of the forgiveness of all our sins that have been showered upon us through the cross of Christ and, yes, also in our baptisms. We are wealthy through all that amazing grace that God has given to us. And we are inheritors 
of something more than any billionaire could ever leave behind here on earth because it can't be taken with you. We are all inheritors of eternal life through what God and Jesus Christ has first done for us. We are truly rich and blessed. So let's be great in how we are stewards, holy stewards, back to the Lord. Let's be great in how we kneel together in prayer for the world and for God's mission. May we be great in how we reach out our hand in tithes and offerings for the sake of the Lord. May we be great in how we open up our arms and care for God's children all across the world. May we be great in how we open our hearts in love for God and for each, for each other. In thanksgiving for all all the amazing grace that God has given us. Let us together be great holy stewards to all the incredible gifts that God has entrusted to us. Amen. together as we are able to say yes Lord yes Lord together and all-powerful creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. I believe Jesus suffered at the hands of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Three days later, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. where he is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and one day he will return to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace together with each other. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace. And God's peace be with you wherever you are. May the Lord be near to you and near with each other for all those whom you love and even for those family of God whom we don't know. May we share in that peace knowing that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We just haven't met yet, but we are all family of God. Before we get to our offerings, we do have one more thing coming up. The congregation may be seated. We have a video of a generosity story from one of our younger members who just recently had something they want to say and share with us. First. Hi, I'm Lauren, and I'm part of the youth group at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Being a part of this family really has impacted me a lot. We've bonded together, we've gone on amazing trips, and we've served right next to each other as well. We've been able to go to Luther Ranch, to Luther Ridge. We had a mission trip where really we were able to touch people's lives and really change them. Service goes both ways. And as far as we change the person's life, we also help change ours too for the good. We are able to be the body of Christ together. And even if we were a hand or a foot, it didn't matter because we were together doing something that we loved. I'm so glad I was able to bond more with the youth here because even if I didn't know them as well, by the end of the week, we shared tears, we shared laughter, we've shared memories and truly God moments together. We had been working next to each other, we'd been eating and at the same table next to each other and it just shared a beautiful experience of service and love to others. I'm so glad I was able to go to Lutheridge as well for Confirmation Week because some of the things that happened there I'll always remember and always have with me. I'm so glad I was able to go on these amazing trips and have these amazing experiences and I'll definitely want to in the future as well because I would love for everyone to be touched by God as well. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you for stewardship. And so, thank you so much for letting things like these happen at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. All right. Thank you for your generous giving that makes ministry here in this place possible. And for anyone who wants to give online as well, holytrinitymarietta.org. We have various ways in which you can give too. Uh, but whatever you do, if you're connected here to this church, wherever you may be gathering, we appreciate those tithes and offerings. But again... Giving is part of being whole for who you are as a holy steward. So even if you're just visiting here and you're not connected to the church, or even if you're um, joining us online and you aren't already connected, I ask to consider giving to something that, that makes a difference and enough where it's meaningful, where you are choosing God over something else, where it's not just leftovers, but it's first fruits. It will be transforming. It does give you, it may be a little tough up front to want to start doing that, but it does give you a sense of peace, a sense of resonance, because we are a little more godly when we give generously, because that is how God has blessed us and come to us through Christ Jesus. So wherever it is, have that sense of being a generous giver. We now receive our tithes and our offerings.
in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the table of the Lord. The meal is ready. Come, let us eat together. Our ushers will invite you forward.
Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you tonight for the opportunity to see your presence and sense your presence and uh, your, your Holy Spirit in this place and in us tonight. Thank you for your blessings and thank you for your peace. And as we leave tonight, we pray, Father, that we continue to look up to you, the everlasting God, to give us strength as we wait upon you to rise up within us, to give us your peace and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand together to your able. journey with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who made us, who loves us, and who walks this journey with us, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.